Hi, I'm Hazel and welcome to the world's latest 8.3 guide. I struggled with horrific visions for quite a while in this patch before I finally caught on to what the cool kids were doing. If you're having a tough time in vision still, hopefully I got something you can use. These tips will be varying levels of obvious, but just don't judge me. I did read guides and stuff when visions came out, but they were really long. Out the gate, let's talk about add-ons. I have two recommendations for you, one important and one, yeah, 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 you know. Uh, so the important one is weak auras, and specifically for this one weak aura you will see me using here. This was massive, it was very helpful for me, and the various trackers will come up a few times in this video. I did not make this weak aura, I found it online, it seems very popular and it's been working well for me, I will link it down below. Second add-on is Handy Notes Visions of Nizoth for markers on the map of your horrific vision showing you where all the stuff is. So this is helpful for learning where the stuff is. Sometimes what I'll do is I will have that add-on enabled in the starting room so that I can scour the map of the vision before I go. You can look through your horrific vision map before you leave in the starting room. And then I'll disable the add-on before I actually head into the vision because the map clutter kind of confuses me. Once you've learned where the important bits are, you don't really need this anymore. In my opinion, the most important locations to memorize are the buff NPCs. Which brings us to my next tip, the buff NPCs. I can't believe how long it took me to figure this out. So in any given horrific vision run, there will be two named NPCs that you can kill for a solid run long buff each. There will always be one in the starting zone and then another one in one of the two medium zones. So in Orgrimmar, you're going to have either the blacksmith here or Gammon at the inn. Whereas in Stormwind, it is either Augustus in this building or the haunted rug over here. Your second mini boss in Orgrimmar will be either Bwemba on the ground level here in the Valley of Cute Troll Huts, or you will click the ethereal bzz bzz here in the transmog hut of the drag to upset that guy. In Stormwind, your second buff NPC will either be in the mining shop of the Dwarven District or the guild bank area of the trade district. When you kill one of those named NPCs, you will get a permanent, pretty significant buff that lasts for the rest of your run. They are not tough fights and they won't take long, so it's usually worth the time to check on and grab them as you go by. Which pair of named mobs are up will randomize each run, but there's always two, one in the starting zone and one in one of the medium zones. Speaking of buffs, next we have the potions. Uh, these are useful and there is a very easy way to know which one is which. In Stormwind, you will see a dead guy here, and the potion next to him is the bad one that drains 100 sanity. In Orgrimmar, the bad potion is next to a dead guy in this hut here. Using our handy weak aura that I once again did not make and will link, we can keep track of which potions are which. You find the bad potion, and then you click that color on the weak aura which will label them. Wabam! We now know which ones are which. The weak aura also gives you a little timer for each one. That's important because if your potion buff expires, a bad thing happens. The fire breath one in particular will fear you when it falls off and that can get ugly. Drinking another of the same potion that you already have up will add on to your duration. So just chug everything that is not the bad potion. If you see that one of your potion buffs is about to expire and you can't top it up, maybe consider clicking it off before you pull your next packer boss. My next tip is less of an actionable item, but do not stress until you have finished your research tree. If you feel stuck in horrific visions, but you don't have this tree filled out to at least Gift of the Titans, don't even worry about trying harder runs until you catch up to that. Just farm mementos by clearing what you can, and you can also get some more for clearing the mini bosses inside of the Nihilotha raid for 200 mementos per mini boss each week. Either way, just get your tree filled out before you stress about not being as good at visions as people you see on Twitch. Visions get wildly easier when you get your cloak caught up past like at least 12 or so and Gift of the Titans. Running visions is much, much harder starting out than it is later on, so just don't write them off too early. You'll notice that things get a lot easier once you get Elite Extermination and you'll get another big bump with Gift of the Titans. Next, if it's available to you, just try a healer or a tank spec for your solo run. When entering a horrific vision solo, healers and tank specs get a special handicap making mobs easier when they do visions alone. You'll find things have 42% less health when you're there on a healer by yourself, and tanks will fight enemies with 25% reduced health. This means that on healers in particular, you can just single target enemies down incredibly quickly, which bypasses a lot of mechanics. It's worth a go, it might be comfier for you, especially if you're otherwise stuck, and also you'll be either tanky or healy, so you don't have to worry so much about dying to death. 
Our next tip to add on to don't stress, I would say also don't rush. The ticking clock of your sanity feels stressful, but unless you like leave to get a snack or something, you are more likely to lose a run to a messy overpull than just not running fast enough. I did my five mask solos with just one pack at a time and largely single targeting down each enemy. Many classes can do well with pulling multiple packs, but you don't have to. So if that's getting you into trouble, just slow down and eat your broccoli and do one thing at a time. Speaking of killing one thing at a time, next is experiment with your talents and essences. What has been working for you in dungeons and raids may not be the best thing for horrific visions. Prioritize crowd control or interrupt abilities and just generally do a quick Google and look up what your class horrific vision guide recommends for essences and talents because it might be different than what you typically use. I did much, much, much better on my solo runs after I gave up on the focusing iris beam and instead tried reaping flames from Breath of the Dying. At rank 3 with Breath of the Dying, you can pretty much just only use it to snipe killing blows and then take those smaller mobs down instantly. While you're getting prepared, don't neglect consumables. Uh, this is another one that I did for a long time because I'm just really cheap, but if you're having trouble, you can get pretty far by using flasks, potions, runes, drums, all that jazz. Again, I'm very cheap, so I do tend to skip this, but popping damage potions and drums on tough bosses absolutely got me through my five mask. Also, I always carry abyssal healing potions and I tell myself they're for emergencies, but then emergencies keep happening to me, so it's not a bad idea to have a first aid kit. Prices for consumables have come down a lot, so this is pretty reasonable. While you're shopping, try the special food. I am partial to this one, the CC reduction one, since if anything is going to kill you, it's probably awkward stuns. You can farm this and cook it yourself pretty easily or just buy it on the auction house. Next tip for a more specific one, target priority, and by that I mean Touch of the Abyss will ruin your life. Um, that spell is a stun and it is cast by the Kathir Dominators in Orgrimmar and the SI7 Informants in Stormwind. Always, 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 always kill those first and keep them targeted in case you need an interrupt. If they're casting and you can't kill them and you can't interrupt them, you know, you can fear them, knock them back, insult their parents, do what you gotta do, but do not let them touch of the abyss you because that will get ugly very quickly when everybody else decides they want to use their ground abilities. For a couple of miscellaneous little tips, uh, mount up when you're at a combat. That might sound obvious, but this will get you around faster. It took me a little too long to figure out that I could mount up. And you're also not stacking up things like leaden foot while mounted, so that's nice. The racing flag toy from the Cloud Serpent people of Pandaria can stop Umbrick's frozen storm, reportedly. That toy does require revered reputation, and I would not go farm rep just for this, since that seems like the kind of thing that could get nerfed. If you do not have a racing flag for that ability, another option aside from just doing it normally is if your class can summon something like a pet or a shadow fiend or, you know, something like that, ghost wolves, I imagine, if you can summon them before he goes and casts his frozen storm, they will chase him and when they get there, they will stop his ability. So that gets me out of at least one of the frozen storms on my priest. While you're in these horrific visions just having the time of your life, there are some special activities that you might choose to indulge in for some extra special fun stuff. So Craggle Wobbletop is this guy in Stormwind, you may have seen him. He is tough to fight because his robots will defend him and he will defend his robots, it's very cute. However, if you drop the toy train set toy, he will get distracted by that toy, you can kill his robots while he's distracted and then you can very easily kill him. That will give you a chance at the Void Spectacle toy. The thing that I've been up to in Horrific Visions is opening mailboxes for chances at the Mail Muncher Mount. There are five mailboxes in each Horrific Vision run, one in each zone. You click that mailbox to spawn an ad and that has a chance to be the Mail Muncher. If the Mail Muncher spawns and you kill it, you get the mount. Anything else is a dud, but you do get the five shots per run, so better luck next time. The male enemies are not hard to fight and they do spawn alone, so you can safely start adding these to your runs pretty early. Um, other fun stuff, you can loot the Quaff Curled Razor toy on the shelf here on the Barbershop of Orgrimmar. You don't have to do anything fancy, just pick it up and make yourself bald. Uh, you can also apparently kick apples in Stormwind for a stacking chance to get the apple toy from the chest. Every apple that you kick adds a 1% chance to get the toy onto your counter, so if you find and kick 100 apples, that is supposedly guaranteed. And that's all I got for you. 
After getting the weak words, consumables, changing my talents around, and then getting comfy with Breath of the Dying, I was able to pretty quickly go from a sketchy two mask to a comfy four mask, and then a completed solo five mask. There's also something to be said for practice here. Visions don't change much from run to run, so as long as you're learning a little each time, you'll get there. Thank you guys for watching, good luck in there, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.